I really just want to dive in and show you how this thing works. So let's do that now. OK, to start showing you this demo, we're going to show you the context that Waypoint has. Context let us talk to different Waypoint servers. And in this case, we have both a local environment that we're running you know, to test our deployments, and then a production environment that we might be sharing uh, across our company. Next, let's look at the Waypoint configuration file for this project. Every project that you have uh, has a Waypoint configuration file. The project is usually you know, maps one-to-one -to, -one to a Git repository or VCS repository. In this case, we name the project called HashiConf Demo, and we have one application that we want to deploy within this project. And to do that, we're going to be using Docker to begin. So you can see the demo here, our app, and then our build and deploy settings. Next, let's take a look at the Docker file that we will be using to build our application. Uh, in this case, it's a pretty standard React-based application. So we're going to build the application with React and then serve it using Nginx. The first thing we have to do with all these configuration files is run a Waypoint init. What a Waypoint init does is registers our project with the Waypoint server, um, but also just makes validates our configuration, makes sure that we have all the plugins, makes sure that we're authenticated properly, et cetera. Once the Waypoint init is done, we could run the up. As the up is running, you can see we build the image and show you that output. We do the deploy, and then we do a release. And just to remind you again, this is all happening against Docker uh, against our local deployment currently. This might be to just test the build, test the deploy, make sure it works. And so once the, the release is done, we get a URL at the end of it. If we click that URL, we could see it worked. Everything deployed, and it's running. OK, so everything worked locally. So the next thing we're going to want to do is switch to our production context. Let's deploy this application into production. And just to show that things are changing, we're also going to modify the application. And so you can see that the deployment looks a little bit different. So just going to uncomment some stuff that we have here uh, in our application so it looks a little different. OK. With that, we're going to also modify the waypoint configuration. In production, we're not going to be using Docker directly. So we're still going to use Docker to build the image, but we also need to push it push the image that it builds to a registry so that our deployment platform can, uh, can reach it. So we're going to use a Docker registry, push to that. And then for the deployment, we're going to use Kubernetes in production. So use that plugin. Kubernetes has slightly different deployment, uh, different configuration. So uh, we're going to do some of that. And we're also going to set up a release manager in this case. And that'll just make sure that we could visit this publicly. We run the init process again. This is done to ensure that we switch servers, so we need to make sure that this project is again registered with the new server. And then we run Waypoint up once again. In this case, it'll look a little different. The build looks the same because we're still using Docker, um, but we're going to see a push happen afterwards. And then we're going to see the deploy and, and release look different because we're going to Kubernetes this time and not Docker, and they work differently. But at the end of it, we get a release URL, we get a deployment URL, and let's go ahead and look at that. OK, so it deployed. It looks different because we modified our application, but it's running on Kubernetes and using the exact same configuration you know, style and the exact same waypoint up workflow. And just to show the flexibility of waypoint one more time, we are now going to modify uh, the application because we're going to deploy it to a different platform. We're going to deploy it to a serverless platform this time. So let's modify the application. and add in uh, a little bit more so it looks different. We're going to add in this timeline component. And let's change it from a dark theme to a light theme. Uh, so it'll definitely look different this time. Next, we're going to modify our Waypoint file again. Um, in this case, we're going to be targeting um, the Azure Container Service. So let's throw away the Kubernetes configurations and add in uh, the Azure Container configurations. OK, so we use the Azure Container Instance plugin. Uh, and this has a number of different configurations. You can see we need a resource group here, some capacity config. Looks a little bit different, um, but the workflow will be the same. So with that saved, we can run uh, Waypoint up again. We don't need an init this time, because it's the same server that we're using. Um, and then 
Again, the deploy and release will look a little different because we're going to ACI this time and not Kubernetes. But at the end of this, we're going to get, again, two URLs out of it, the application URL and the deployment URL. If we open that, we now see our light mode waypoint website with our timeline component rendered there. And this is now running on ACI. So we showed three different deploys, one locally on Docker, one in Kubernetes, and one in ACI. And throughout the whole thing, it required minimal changes and just running waypoint up again, basically. So we talked about exec and logs, so let's also look at that. If we run waypoint exec bin sh, we get a shell. This shell is running in ACI. This is a feature that ACI doesn't provide natively. So this is showing how waypoint could provide features like this that the platform may not support. It's a real shell. We could prove that by, you know, catting our nginx configuration that we built into our image, and you could see that is there. And we could also take a look at logs. So let's go ahead and run waypoint logs, and we could see all the various you know, requ HTTP request output that we would see because we visited uh, the application. And let's finally look at the UI. So we did all this. We've been working in the terminal this whole time. Let's open up the UI. You could do that really simply with the waypoint UI command. Since our Mac in this case is in light mode, our UI is also in light mode. And you could see here, we have all our builds, all our deploys listed here. You saw some logs you could also see from the UI. The UI just gives you a great way to get an overview of everything that has been happening with this Waypoint server. On the releases page, or on the deployments page, you could also see on the right here that for each deploy, we have that deployment URL. I mentioned earlier in the keynote that every single deploy gets a versioned URL. And so we have v1 and v2 here. They have the same name, the globally communal fox, because they're the same application, but they get the v1 and v2 because they're different deploys. And what I want to do here is click each of them, because if you remember, one is on Kubernetes and one is on ACI, and yet both deployment URLs work. We deployed to both Kubernetes and ACI. The deployment URLs are roughly the same except for the version, and you can visit both versions of that application. And that's really neat because you could go back in time and see the previous state of your deployments. And at the end of all this, once we're ready to clean up, we could run a waypoint destroy, waypoint deployment destroy, and just you know destroy all our deployments. And this deletes them and makes them so they are no longer visible. And that is waypoint.